also welcome uh, this week to our lecture in uh, plumbing and uh, sanitation. Okay, so let's discuss about wastewater constructed wasteland. Okay, so 58% of groundwater are contaminated with coliform. So when you say coliform, these are the bacteria from feces of warm-blooded animals like human beings, um, rats, um, other warm-blooded animals, so uh, mammals uh, in general. So they seep into the water uh, table sometimes, which is quite uh, dangerous because they could they could be uh, used for uh, drinking. Then, if you drink water that is not uh, sanitary, then it could cause a lot of diseases also. Then, thirty one percent of illnesses are caused by waterborne diseases such as cholera, SARS, typhoid, and etc. So 30 years from now, there will be no more safe drinking water. 25 Filipinos die daily due to waterborne related diseases. So this amounts to 67 billion pesos uh, spent by the government each year. So that's uh, 3 billion in health, 13, 17 billion in fisheries, and 47 billion in uh, tourism. 2.2 million metric tons of organic pollution are produced annually. 48% domestic waste, 37% agriculture waste due to inorganic fertilizers and pesticides, and 15% industrial waste. Then, did you know, class, that in cities, almost half of the pollution in rivers are from industries. The other half come from households. In rural areas, where there are no industries, almost all the water pollution is due to household sources. So, you can see here in the picture, class, so they're near the water. So, you can just imagine the amount of uh, water pollution that is produced uh, in that community. Okay, so what wastewater do we produce? So we produce wastewater when we flush the toilet, uh, when we take a bath or use the shower, when we wash dishes or clothes, when we clean our houses and others. I'm going to use this example of car wash. So according to the Clean Water Act, Republic Act 9275, nobody is allowed to discharge wastewater fully or partially to bodies of water such as seas, rivers, creeks, etc. without undergoing treatment. In Section 20, local government units shall share the responsibility in the management and improvement of water quality within their territorial jurisdictions. Okay, so let's uh, take a look about this two-stage Constructed Wetland Wastewater Treatment Plant. So it's the first LGU constructed and managed artificial wetland in the Philippines in Barangay Villarreal in Balao in Bayawan City. So why use constructed uh, waste wetland? Because it's in all natural treatment systems, no chemicals, no high-tech machinery. The construction of wetlands planted with reeds, is tambo, bungalod, tigbao, kabon up. It is also low cost. Okay, so this was the same previous situation of the area. As you can see, there were a lot of garbage everywhere. So when you look at it, so this is another uh, picture of it. So it's not really sanitary. So you can just imagine the amount of mosquitoes breeding also in the area. Okay, so there's another picture. Okay, so it really looks disorganized and unsanitary. I think this is really common here in the Philippines. So this is the proposed site for the Kawad Kaling housing project. Okay. So 
So it's an area of 7 hectares. The location is in Barangay Villarreal. This is the west wait, uh, wastewater treatment existing, existing here. Then a second one was uh, in this location, a third one in this location, a fourth one here, and a fifth treatment plant here. Okay, and then this is the reed bed one, which is 1,800 square meters. Reed bed two, 880 square meters. And this is the main sump. So let's see how does constructed wasteland, uh, wetland works. Okay, so this is the diagram. So the water supply from Bayan water is taken shallow wells. It goes to the different houses. Then it goes to the septic tank. Okay, so this is the waste from the houses. It goes to the septic tank. Then it goes to the main sump. So after the main sump, it goes to the first reed bed, which is for the vertical flow. It goes to the horizontal flow, is read bed 2. Then it recirculates. The treated effluent here, it's recirculated again. Before it goes, some goes to firefighting disposal, the marine outfall. Then some goes for reuse. So this is the flow. Okay, so I think class, in our plumbing, our previous plumbing lecture, so we discussed about the uh, septic pulp and STPs. And other uh, uh, techniques in sanitation and plumbing. Okay, so it's really important that before, when we discharge water from our building or property, that the water gets treated. Okay, because we are these are uh, finite resources and must take care of our planet. Okay, so these are the natural waste water filters that are used. So you can see nipa plants, mangroves, and also reeds. Okay. They are called the kidney of the earth. So your kidneys class in your body, what they do is that they uh, filter uh, waste. In the same way, these nipa plants, mangroves, and reeds, they filter um, the bad things that are found in uh, garbage. In wastewater. Okay, so it's like a biological uh, filtration system. So you can see here the, ro the roots here that they absorb the pollution. So this is the process flow for the vertical flow. And here you can find a solid pipe. Then you have a perforated pipe. These are openings. Aeration. So the, the the height is around uh, minus 15 uh, centimeters, so it's 0.15 to this layer. Okay. You can see the large stones and our perforated pipe, which is the aeration pipe. It's approximately every four square meters. So it composes of sharp sand here. Then six millimeter washed tea gravel. 6 millimeter ground gravel, then we have the last layer, the 30 to 60 millimeter round washed gravel. So it passes through the system for going to the free uh, draining outlet. So this is the cross section of a vertical flow reed bed system. Okay, so this is the horizontal flow. So from here, the fluent passes, and this is our filtering system, then it goes here, then it comes out as a treated fluent. So this is another diagram class to explain it. So this is bed one. Okay. So from bed one here, the collection collection pipe is the perforated pipe, it goes here to the intermediate chamber, then it goes to the bed two. And it's collected by the perforated pipe again. Then it goes here to the uh, final fluent sum. Then it goes to the header tank. Then some goes uh, going to, is from the header tank. It's going to be reused, or it's going to, going to be discharged to the receiving body of water. So this is another uh, diagram to view. So this is how it looks like. This is the bed one. It's an elevated. Uh, 
uh, have elevated a much higher level uh, led to this uh, bump. So these are some of the pictures class. This is the construction phase. Okay. Okay, so this is the construction phase. Last you can see here. Uh, So there are some excavations being done. Okay, and then these are the plants which should be used. And this is the inauguration. Okay. So this was a lecture uh, a few years ago given to us architects. But I think this is a good system which you can use also in your future thesis and in your project someday. Especially if you want to create um, a dream big to the switch treatment plant or facility. So it, I think it looks really nice and organized compared to the earlier pictures. Okay, so this is another example from the Fisherman's Dawad Kalinga village. So that's it. That's for our lecture on the two-stage uh, constructed wetland uh, wastewater treatment plant, which is found in uh, Barangay Villa Real in Baya City. So. If you have any further questions or clarifications, class, you can reach me anytime, and I'll respond, class, as long as I'm as long as I'm online. Okay, so I'm going to post an activity about this uh, example of a wastewater treatment plant uh, in our group page. Okay, so stay safe and see you next uh, 